Good morning. Good morning to my union family. Good morning. My name is Minister Damian Walker. I'm the youth minister at Mission Union Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to give honor to God, to the Almighty, to the All Powerful, the All Merciful God. I would just like to thank Him for the work that He's doing in my life. I would like to thank my pastor uh, for allowing me to speak this morning. Uh, I would like to ask that the church continuously pray for our pastor. Please pray for our pastor. Uh, pray for our leaders, our country, our city, and our congregation. Amen. I just want to mention a couple things, just in case this is your first time. Um, we are on Facebook, YouTube every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. We start off with Sunday school. Uh, we have a adult class we also have the uh sunday school for the youth um the youth class breaks into children's church uh so i would recommend that uh we have something for everybody uh i would like to ask you to continuously pray for our ministers i just have to give a super duper shout out to our to our millennial minister minister deontay guy um he's just doing extraordinary things in the community he's doing awesome work um, at his college, he just, he just, he just shining church. And, and I'm just so proud of that guy. Um, pray for him, pray for him and pray for us all, please. Um, all right. So this is first Sunday and every first Sunday, we take the time to wish all people who have birthdays in October a happy birthday. It's a happy birthday. No, I'm not going to sing. Uh, but happy birthday. Uh, we would also like to acknowledge and congratulate everybody that's um, celebrating in the wedding, wedding anniversary in the month of October. Happy anniversary, happy birthday, congratulations for myself and the rest of the union family. Good morning, once again, uh, my sermon this morning, church is gonna come from Luke chapter eight, verses 40 through 42, and then 49 through 53. Luke chapter 8, uh, 40 through 42, and then 49 through 53. And the title of my message is Hope or Faith? Hope or Faith? Now, when Jesus returned, a crowd welcomed him, for they were all expecting him. Then a man named Jairus, a synagogue leader, came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come to his house because his only daughter, a girl of about 12 years old, was dying. While Jesus was speaking to her, a messenger arrived from the house of Jairus, the leader of the synagogue. He told him, your daughter is dead. There's no use in troubling the teacher now. But when Jesus heard what had happened, he said to Jairus, don't be afraid, just have faith and she will be healed. When they arrived at the house, Jesus wouldn't let anyone go in except Peter, John, James, and the little girl's mother and father. The house was filled with people weeping and wailing. But he said, stop the weeping, she's not dead, she's only asleep. All right, but so I don't know about y'all, but I, I really can't imagine how J. Iris felt after losing his only daughter or thinking he's going to lose his only daughter. I, I mean, I have five kids and, and I can't even think about or, or fathom the idea of losing one of them or one of them dying. I just, it hurts my heart just thinking about it. I just can't imagine something like that. Um... I was going to say, I don't know what I would do if I was in that position, but I was in that position, similar, a similar position two times in my life, two times in my life. And, and what I did was prayed like I never prayed before. Church, I prayed like, like it was going out of style. I was praying, praying, praying. Amen. But not only did I pray, I had hope and I had faith. So some say, what's the difference? I mean, aren't they the same thing? What's the difference between hope and faith? I used to think they were exact. 
I didn't know there was a difference between hope and faith until recently. Um, so today, this morning, I just want to talk for a couple minutes, if y'all will allow me, to try to, to differentiate hope from faith. Sometimes God will put us in a position where we have nothing but hope and faith. Anybody ever been in, in a position like that or, or close to anybody ever been in a position where you had nothing but hope and faith? There, there was nothing in our humanly power that we were able to do to get us out of this mess or this jam that we were in. Somebody say, but God, but God got me through and God will get us through every single time. So for a few minutes this morning, church, I just want to talk about hope and faith. We try to differentiate hope and faith. Uh, so let's go back a little bit. Uh, Jairus' daughter was sick. He knew about Jesus, so he went to seek Jesus. So when he saw Jesus, Jairus fell at the feet of Jesus, pleading for Jesus to go to his house and save his daughter. But Soon a messenger came and told Jairus that his daughter had died. But Jesus still went to Jairus' house. Jairus didn't stop Jesus from going to his house, even though he was told the daughter was dead. Now, now some people may call that desperation. Amen. Some people may just, he was desperate. He had nothing else to do. But church, I'm here to tell you, that was hope. That was hope. Jairus was full of hope. Hope deals with the future. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you future and a hope. Amen? Future and a hope. Now, some people define hope as a wish or desire. But in the Bible, hope is a steady, continuing expectation of good from God. Let me say that again. Hope is a steady, continuing expectation of good from God. Hope is the confident expectation what God has promised Hope is the confident expectation of what God has promised, and in its strength is his faithfulness. So the strength of our hope, church, comes from God's faithfulness. Amen? It's all, hope is always expecting good from God no matter what the situation is, no matter what, no matter what we're going through, no matter what. And this is a perfect time for hope, church. We need hope right now in this day and age. Amen? Now, faith is different from hope. Although all hope is based on faith. All hope is based on faith. Faith is different from hope because faith deals with the present. Amen? Faith is now. We have faith now because of the situation God has brought us through. We have faith now because of the first hand situations we saw God do some incredible awesome works in other people's lives amen Jairus expressed faith in Jesus's ability to heal his child Jairus wanted Jesus to go to his house lay hands on a child so the child so the child can be healed Jairus had faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ first that's first Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 8 says but since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith as a breastplate, putting on the hope, the helmet of hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So church, God has already paved the way. God has already opened the door. God has already accepted us as his, as his children. Now it's up to us 
to accept Christ as our personal savior. It's up to us to have hope and faith. After that, it's up to us to arm ourselves with the breastplate of faith. It's up to us to put on the helmet of hope and salvation. It's up to us to arm ourselves with the sword of the Holy Spirit. It's up to us to walk through the door that God has already opened for us. Is anybody out there ready to arm themselves with the suit of armor that God has provided? Anybody? Is anybody out there ready to arm themselves? We are all soldiers in the army of the Lord. Is anybody ready for the battle? All hope is based on faith. All hope is based on faith. Faith is different be hope from hope because faith is in the present. Faith is the now. We have faith now. Why? Because we saw a situation God brought us through. We have faith now because we saw firsthand the incredible, awesome works that God does in other people's lives. Amen, somebody. So Jairus had faith. He wanted Jesus to go lay hands on the child so the child can be healed. He had faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. First Thessalonians 8. I'm sorry, chapter 5, verse 8. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and hope of the salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. So church, God already paved the way. God has already opened the door. God already accepted us as his children. Now it's up to us to accept Christ as our personal savior. It's up to us to have hope and faith. After that, it's up to us to arm ourselves with the breastplate of faith. It's up to us to put on the helmet of hope of salvation. It's up to us to arm ourselves with the sword of the Holy Spirit. It's up to us to walk through the door, y'all, that God has already opened for us. Is anybody out there ready to arm themselves with the suit of armor that God has provided us with? We are all soldiers in the army of the Lord. Is anybody out there ready for the battle? By faith, church, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. So that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain. By faith, he was committed as righteous when, spoke, when God spoke well of his offerings. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not have to experience death. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built the ark to save his family. By faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in him, keeping with faith. By faith, when called to go to a place he would later receive as an inher inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, Sarah, who was past childbearing age, had a baby at 90 years old. By faith, that woman just wanted to touch the hem of Jesus' garment so she could stop bleeding. By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to their future. By faith, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and worshiped as he leaned on the top of his staff. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as Pharaoh's son. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than enjoy the fleeing pressures of sin. By faith, he regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. By faith, he left Egypt not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw who is invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and an application of blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea on dry land. And when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were all drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after the army had marched around them for seven days. By faith, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into the fiery furnace and came out unharmed. Somebody say, by faith. 
Somebody say by faith. Scream it. Type it. Somebody say by faith. By faith. So we all know that we all we need hope. We all know that we need faith. But the Bible says love is the greatest of all. First Corinthians 13, 13 says, and now these three remain. Faith, hope, and love. But love is the greatest of these. It was the love, church, that caused God to give his only begotten son. It was love that held Jesus Christ to the cross. It was love that made him lay there all day and night Friday, all day and night Saturday. And it was love that he rose with all power in his hands on Sunday morning. Amen, somebody. Is anybody happy that Jesus rose with all power? Give God some praise if you're happy that God rose with all power in his hands. Give God some praise if you're happy that Jesus defeated death on the cross. Give God some praise, y'all. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. Amen. Amen. Woo. Woo. God rose with all power in his hands. So hope is the uh, inner desire or a wish, right? Faith is the action taken on the hope. So for us to have hope, we must continue to expect good from God no matter what we're going through. I know times are hard once again now, but we have to keep our hope and keep our faith. In the name of Jesus, uh, we just need to keep our hope and our pray, uh, our faith. I'm sorry. If you love Christ, give God some praise. If you love God, give God some praise. If you're happy God woke you up this morning, give God some praise. All right. Are you saved? Have you accepted Christ as a personal savior? So the Bible says, to be saved, we must accept Christ as our personal savior. Believe that he rose from the grave with all power in his hand. Are you saved? You wanna get saved? Contact us at Union Missionary Baptist Church. Reach out to your local church. Reach out to somebody who knows the church. Times are hard right now, and we all need to be saved right now.
Greetings, my brothers and sisters. I am Pastor Victor Covington, the servant of God at the Union Missionary Baptist Church. And I come in the name of the Lord today, the joy of the Holy Spirit, thanking God for just another day that the Lord has kept us. What a powerful, what an inspiring, what a awesome message Minister Damian Walker just shared with us on this first Sunday in October 2020. And we want to take this moment and thank Minister Walker for allowing the Lord to use him to be a blessing to us. I want to encourage you to share this message. Don't let it be just for today, but share it across the globe and have other people share it. As says, our mission is not only to know Christ, but our mission at Union is to make Christ known. Now, I know Minister Walker acknowledged at all of the birthdays and wedding anniversaries of October, but there's one anniversary I got to give a shout out to, and that is the wedding anniversary of my wife, my real, my heart, my soulmate, uh, Lady Jennifer Covington. Yes, the Lord has kept us for 17 years, 17 down and an eternity to go. Happy anniversary, honey, and thank you all for being a blessing unto us. God bless you. Please prepare your hearts and your minds for um, as we position ourselves to partake in the Lord's Supper today. Amen. Lord's Supper today. I want to read 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through 32. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. 
After the same manner also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is a new testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned by the world. My brothers and my sisters, very quickly, there are two ordinances in which the Baptist Church recognizes. The first ordinance is the ordinance of baptism by immersion. And the other ordinance is the Lord's Supper or what we affectionately call the Holy Communion. The Lord's Supper is a symbolic act that calls to mind the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Savior and Lord Jesus, who is the Christ. When we take the bread and the cup, we remembering that Jesus died for our sins on the cross, was buried, and rose again. We're also remembering that he is coming back again. So th this is the time when we come together that we put all of our heart's attention on Jesus. We remember Jesus. That's what the Lord's Supper is all about. Jesus said, this do in remembrance of me. Well, what is it we should remember with the, this in this time, my brothers and sisters? It's a time for us. It's a time of commemoration. It's a time of commemoration. The word commemorate means to honor the memory of somebody or some event. It is a time to serve as a memorial of something. If the Lord's Supper is anything, it is a memorial. So we come, first of all, to commemorate. We commemorate his suffering. We commemorate his suffering. The Verse 24 and 25 of the text that I read talk about the broken body and the blood of Jesus. Both of these words are vivid phrases that bring to mind suffering and pain. We commemorate his suffering, but we also commemorate his sacrifices. God became man in Jesus, and Jesus is 100% God, 100% man, and he lived and died in this world to redeem the lost. But as the God-man in the earth, Jesus suffered shame. He suffered rejection. He suffered poverty, and he suffered pain. So we come to commemorate not only his suffering, but his sacrifice. He didn't have to do it, but he did. It's not only a time of commemoration, but the Lord's Supper is a time of contemplation. It's a time of contemplation. That means to think about something seriously. It means to think about something at length and in depth. The message of uh, verses 27 through 32 let us know that when we come to, to the Lord's table for the Holy Communion, it is a serious occasion, my brothers and sisters. What are we to contemplate? We are to contemplate our salvation. When the Paul uses the word us and we, he's speaking to believers. The Lord's table is set for anyone who trusts in Christ as Lord and Savior. It's not meant to push anybody away because if you're not saved, if you've not trusted in Christ, you can trust in them right here, right now, and participate of this. But we contemplate our salvation. But secondly, we contemplate our sanctification. In verse 27, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthy shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Unworthily, unworthily, meaning not discerning the Lord's body, has the idea of treating Jesus and his work on Calvary like it, it's a joke, not taking it serious. The Lord is telling us, he says, we ought to contemplate, he says, examine ourselves. 
ourselves, examine ourselves. We need to be sure that we are living lives that are clean and are pure and are holy, that we have a penitent life. We are constantly repenting of the faults and failures that we have, my brothers and sisters. It is important. And if we find ourselves as believers in trouble, John writes to us in his first epistle in the first chapter in the ninth verse, he gives us this promise. He gives us this command. He gives us this option. He says, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When we do that, we can expect and receive the forgiveness of God and partake in a worldly manner. Now, yes, this, is, this Lord's Supper is not just a time to commemorate. It's not just a time to contemplate, but it's also a time to celebrate. Yes, the Lord's Supper is a time for celebration. I'm sure you're getting your elements now, your bread and your wine, your, your cracker and your juice, whatever elements you're going to use that represent the body and the blood. Get it ready because we're about to celebrate. We're about to celebrate. What do we celebrate? We celebrate his compassion. God, Jesus became man for us. He says he did this in verse 24. He died for us. These words remind us that Jesus did what he did and suffered what he suffered, all because God and he loved us. John 15 verse 13 says this, greater love hath no man than this, than a man laid down his own life for his friends. All Jesus laid down his life for me. He laid down his life for you. But not only that, he did it when we were still sinners. We celebrate his compassion, but we also celebrate his conquest or his conquering. He what did he conquer? What what did he conquer? He he conquered death, hell, and the grave because we believe that on that third day morning, the Jesus who was crucified on Friday, buried on Friday, got up with all power in his hands on Sunday. So we celebrate not only that he rose, but he rose victoriously and triumphantly. He rose as a conqueror. But not only that, during and finally, we celebrate his coming. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show forth his death until he comes again. We make Christ known when we participate together in one accord with one heart and one mind, remembering Jesus. We're telling the world that we believe that he's coming back Again, my brothers and sisters, Revelation 2, 22 and 20 records the Lord Jesus saying this, he which testifieth of these things said, surely I come quickly, amen. And the revelatory writer says, even so come quickly, Lord Jesus. He's coming and that's the truth we celebrate with joy today. Take some time to commemorate take some time to contemplate and let's all take some time to celebrate let us pray father we thank you so much for who you are and how great you are and how you so loved us that you sent your only begotten son that whosoever believeth him shall not perish but have everlasting life. We thank you for that. We also thank you that he ever liveth making an intercession for us. So Father, we come before you today asking that if you find any sin, any shortcomings, faults, failures, iniquities, transgressions within us today, we confess it and ask you to forgive us and cleanse us from unrighteousness. Now, God, as we prepare to come together in one accord with one heart, remembering the love, the compassion, and the conqueror of Christ, we pray that you take these elements in our hands from a natural use to a spiritual use in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Thank you so much. Get your elements, amen. Get your elements with you today. And I want to read again 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 and 24. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it 
and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me, let us eat. After the same manner, after the same manner, also he took the cup, which when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, that concludes our Holy Communion. Amen. I pray that you continuously remember Jesus by commemorating, contemplating, and certainly celebrating. God bless you. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you and amen.